any woman who has had to keep a blanket or an extra sweater or a fleece or a parka or winter boots at her desk knows the perils of air conditioning in the office in the summertime. But could the air conditioning in your office actually be sexist? Maybe there's a scientific reason behind the freezing air in your workplace. The medical journal Nature Climate Change says most office buildings set temperatures based on a formula from the 1960s that used the metabolic rates of men who were the primary workers in that generation. Pam Bellick is a health and science writer for the New York Times and wrote about the science behind the Arctic office. It drives me bonkers. It can be 100 degrees outside, and we come inside, and we're shivering. And you are not alone. It is amazing how many women have been tweeting about this, um, posting about it. They are all freezing. And we've been complaining about it for years and years, and yet it seems like nothing gets done. So why are the temperatures set for men? So this formula was devised by a man in the 1960s, and it has all of these different permutations and factors and things like that, airspeed, wind speed, all of that stuff. But it also includes the metabolic rate, which is how much heat we produce. And that number, that metabolic rate, was calibrated according to a 40-year-old man who weighed 154 pounds in the 1960s. By the way, I mean, not for nothing, but we also dress differently than the guys do. I mean, uh, a suit and a tie keeps you a lot warmer than a dress with bare legs and bare arms. Exactly, exactly. So this formula does have a little uh, way to plug in clothing insulation, but it's the clothing insulation from the 1960s, not so much now. Okay, so is it going to change? Well, the authors of this study have proposed um, a different way to calibrate the formula. They want to use real metabolic rates instead of this, you know, disembodied... 40-year-old man number, and they want to add other types of um, things like your body tissue insulation. But honestly, it's so complicated, and it takes the building industry so long to kind of, you know, change its standard that that's probably not going to happen. This doesn't There's always one verboten space heater that's down below someone's desk blowing right. hot air so that they don't have to wear a parka in the middle of summertime. One last thing. When we're talking about the air conditioning and it being set probably too low for comfort for most women, and, and occasionally you hear the guys complaining about it too, what's that doing to the environment? Because we don't need to cool all this air to such a low degree. Right. The reason why this study was in this journal, Nature Climate Change, is they're saying, look, you know, yeah, there's this, you know, fairness issue, you know, we shouldn't have gender bias, but... We're also wasting a whole lot of energy. It's very expensive to air condition buildings. And so if we're making buildings way too cool for half the workforce, we are wasting a lot of energy. We are um, contributing to worsening climate change. Pam, it's great to talk to you. Thank you so much for coming in and telling us a little bit about sexist air conditioning. I've never covered that topic before. <laughs> Happy to do it. Yeah.